So I was editing and realized I totally skipped putting my worst book of the week at the end of this video. So yeah, Teen Titans Academy, really, really bad. I cannot stand Stitch as a character, and I'm not sure anyone else can either. The actual Titans act nothing like the Titans and only get yelled at by the children, specifically Stitch, mad about misgendering. I just, I don't know what you want me to say. Is this book real? Like, are we still playing on the Red X stuff? I'm super, super over it. Yeah, so worst book of the week. Now to the top 10. Five, top five. Hold up. Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerdette's Newsstand, and it is that time of week again where we talk about the best of the best of the best. I have my top five picks for comics of the week. I also have an honorable mention and one I think you should probably avoid. It is so bad, I don't know what to do with it, but that will be towards the end. So let's start right off with my honorable mention, and it would probably be really low in this actual countdown had I read it. Now, what I'm talking about specifically is Echo Lands number five. This is a fantastic, and I mean fantastic, comic book, but I have not got a chance to read it this week, so I couldn't be unfair and put it in my top five without giving some sort of information that I've only gotten about three pages in, and I am seeing what is going on in the art by J.H. Williams III is probably the most beautiful comic of the century. I am not even being hyperbolic, and that is crazy, but it is absolutely stunning. So, Let's actually talk top five. If you are new to the channel, though, and enjoy this type of content, I cover comics, movies, TV a little bit, and more. Make sure you hit subscribe. As always, hit like. Let me know what your top books were of the week. And let's start with number five. I had Stray Dog Dog Days. Now, this was a really good book, and the entire series as a whole was phenomenal. The only reason I put this at number five is because it felt like the stories centering around the dogs were very, very short. Some of them were only four or five pages, and it felt like they flew by. Like, the very first one about the monster is so cute. I absolutely love Killer, but it goes very quickly, and that's not always a bad thing, but I definitely want more of this. Gucci is still my favorite but we even get a cat in the mix, and I absolutely love it. So please, Image, if you are listening, please let there be more stray dogs. So for number four, I have Robin number nine. Now, Robin has been consistently very good. The art in this is phenomenal. But what I really liked about this was the idea that Robin for a very long time, has been kind of a lone ranger. And this brought that teamwork together. We got to see a little bit of Alfred, and I think most of us miss Alfred at this point. He really needs to come back. Come on, it's been like two years. Bring Alfred back. Oh, well, we got to see him in a little bit of flashbacks. He works with Robin, and they figure out kind of how to move forward and how to defeat this Lazarus demon. But at the end, there's a really weird twist that I'm not sure. I'm like, are we in, are we time traveling now? Like what's going on guys? Like I, I'll see where it goes. Joshua Williams on this title has been great. So I'm sure it's still headed in a good direction. But for number three, I have flash 77. 77. Okay. This book, I cannot say enough good about Jeremy Adams does a wonderful job at making this story very familial and very wholesome. We had an issue not too long ago that was wonderful with a daddy-daughter dance, and this one brings Jai front and center, and we get to see his diary, a.k.a. his action log, and just kind of that cutesy relationship with him and his sister is very reminiscent of Super Sons. So it's kind of nice to see that back again when we know we're not getting anything from the Super Sons. I really like Jeremy Adams on this book. 
please, again, I just ask Image, DC, if you have half a brain, put Jeremy Adams on more properties. This man is fantastic, and he un- understands every part of this character, every character in this book. Because, of course, we do see stuff like Ragman and Dr. Fate when you're with the Flash in Gem World. Amazing, amazing book. So, next, I have Action Comics 1038. And I won't talk too long about this because I am going to do an entire, maybe an entire breakdown or at least some of the allegories that I am seeing coming out of Action Comics. Now, Philip Kennedy Johnson, I have been on board with action comics from the beginning he started off in future state he let us know he knew what clark stood for and who he was and then we saw him a little bit in the superman title before jonathan kent took over and now we're seeing him against the mongol who is not the mongol who was and we're seeing him on war world having to go through a bunch of trials as of right now leah is dead the new light ray and we are seeing what he is doing with that and the way an earmuffs if you do not want spoilers it's not a huge spoiler but it is the last panel so yeah it kind of is the way that philip kennedy johnson is framing this story is looking at it through hope clark is aspirational 100 percent This character should inspire you to be better, should inspire those around him to be better. And Philip Kennedy Johnson gets it. And there's a lot of really cool allegories with the chains I want to talk about at some point. Then also Philip Kennedy Johnson has done some help with um, human trafficking. And that's even in a way in this. So I cannot recommend Action Comics enough to tell you this is the best Superman that we have seen in a very, very long time since Morrison. This is the best Superman that I have read in a very, very long time. I am so impressed by this War World saga. I hope he sticks to the landing because I have seen some variants where we have the other Superman come in like Steel and Cyborg Superman, and that worries me a little bit. I hope they don't follow too much of the Death of Superman and the Return of Superman storyline, but honestly, this is really good, and it's deep as fuck, and I love it. I absolutely love it. So, for my number one, as I said, I'm not going to talk too much about it and then go way too much into it. I have Swamp Thing Green Hell number one. This is by Jeff Lemire. And Jeff Lemire was on my top 10 for this year. Actually, I think he ended up being number two. Everything that Jeff Lemire touches anymore is phenomenal. Now, he's done a lot of really great work in the past. I've talked on this channel about how much I love Sweet Tooth or his old Moon Knight stuff. But Jeff Lemire with Robin and Batman, with this, with Maze Book, with Primordial, is one of those writers That when his name is on a book, I buy it. No question, I buy it. Jeff Lemire is so extremely talented. It is unfathomable at this point that he is going to write a bad book. And then you add art on top of it from Doug Mankey, and you have like the perfect version of Swamp Thing. And it is very, depending on how you like your Swamp Thing, this is a very horror-esque book. This is very much so different than the series that is going on with Ram V as Levi Kamai when he is the avatar of the green. This is very different, but actually I think it kind of borrows off of each other because we see the green, we have the red, we have the decay, and I do think that is actually where where we're seeing Ram V go with it. But we have a single father trying, you know, in a post-apocalyptic world, just trying to take care of his children or his child, his little girl. And Swamp Thing is is absent. The whole world is underwater. And we see a lot of that struggle. And Earmuffs, if you do not want spoilers, because I am going to have to tell you one character that I absolutely love that showed up. We get to see Constantine. And Constantine is kind of like this legend at the lighthouse and... And you're not supposed to go talk to him. He's about, you know, he's he's the ghost story that they tell the kids. And Swamp Thing 
is summoned and we go from there. But seeing, you know, Constantine as an old man and still being, you know, sassy as hell and crazy. And I love it. And this is very brutal. I'll warn you of that right away. It definitely is brutal. You are going to see vines go through people's eyeballs and and people decapitated. But it's worth it. This book is set to be something that I... um think will go down along with, you know, when you when you describe Swamp Thing, you say, well, Scott Snyder, Alan Moore, next is going to be Jeff Lemire. Now, I could be wrong. He could totally mess up the next two issues of this, but I just don't see that happening. I honestly don't. This book is a super strong recommend. That and Action Comics, my most strong recommend of the year. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, it's only the third, but still of the year. <laughs> Anyways, let me know, of course, what your guys' top picks of the week are. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.